Three, two, one. Let's get going. All right, so we're going to wrap up Chapter 2 out of our textbook today by talking about substitutions. So we've talked about uh, multiple different types of first-order differential equations that we can solve using various techniques. Now, this, of course, doesn't cover every possible differential equation in existence. So what do you do when you run afoul of a first-order DE that doesn't land in the category of separable, linear, or exact? Well... One thing you could do is uh, coax it into one of the forms that we know. So that's this idea of a substitution. So let's get into it. So uh, we're going to use the word homogeneous a lot in this class. And um, for first order differential equations, homogeneous is going to mean the following. It means a differential equation so that the right-hand side is a function of two variables, but in a weird way. Specifically, the right-hand side involves two variables, but the two variables are always together in the sense that it's y over x. Now, I want to note, before we uh, get into some examples and uh, talk about how to solve such differential equations. Your book is a very different way of explaining it. Um, the way your book explains it is that any first order D in differential form is homogeneous if the functions f and n have the property that you can pull out a power of t. Um, and Technically speaking, this is the right definition of homogeneous, sort of. This is known as homogeneous of order alpha. Um, it turns out that these are both uh, equivalent to each other, and both of them can be solved using the exact same substitution. So equivalently, um, if you can factor out a power of t, then you can make the right-hand side equal this. So we're about to actually go through this and see that that is actually true. And then we'll see how you can solve such equations using a substitution. I just want to note, the way your book presents it is in this way, which is, like, technically correct, but is also, in my opinion, not as convenient as this form. This form, it's really clear that you would use that substitution, but in this case, it's like, why the hell would you do this? It doesn't make any sense. But um, let's, let's, let's work through it and um, see how it goes. So, for example... Here's a first order differential equation in its differential form. Now, if I check the homogeneity for differential forms, the way they told us to do it, I replace x and y with tx and ty, and I note that I can factor out a power of t, specifically the first power of t. So, hey, it's homogeneous. So that means the substitution can work. But remember, the other way that I describe homogeneous is that it can be rewritten as a function of two variables where the variable y and x are always together as a fraction. So if I were to, exactly like I did here, subtract this term over, cross multiply, ah, yes, the right-hand side is a function of two variables, but the two variables y and x are given as a fraction. Okay, so in this form, it's, in my opinion, a lot clearer to see why we would use the substitution uh, y is equal to y over, u is equal to y over x, because, yeah, was, what else would you do? <laughs> um, also, worth noting, this is actually a linear equation. You could solve this as a linear, but for the uh, goal of demonstrating the method, let's do this. <laughs> All right, so if we let u equals uh, y over x, that means that uh, u times x is equal to y. That would mean that the derivative of y with respect to x coincides with the derivative of u times x. u is a function of x. Remember, it's y over x, so it's a function of x. So when we take the derivative of that, product rule, derivative of the first times the second plus derivative of the second times the first, which is equal to this. So plugging that back into the DE then gives me x times du dx plus u, that's dy dx. dy dx, recall, is y over x minus 1. That would then turn to u minus 1, and oh, conveniently, there's a u and a u, so they cancel. And I get du over dx is equal to negative uh, 1 over x. And hey, 
I can simply integrate that one. That's a nice one, right? The right-hand side only involves the independent variables, so that could just be integrated. I don't have to do anything fancy. It is separable. If you want to go through the method for separable uh, DEs, then go ahead and do that, but it accomplishes the same thing. And, hooray, I've solved the DE, right? Well, not quite. The DE started in terms of Y and X, so it needs to end in terms of Y and X. So, replace the U with what I know it's equal to in terms of Y of X, a uh, Y and X, it's Y over X, and then cross multiply the X, giving me the beautiful solution, negative X times log of X plus C times X. Right. X is not a constant, so when I do multiply it, I got to respect the constant in that case. All right, and hey, there we go. We've solved a homogeneous first order differential equation. Nice. Okay, so that's one type of substitution that you can do. What are some other substitutions you could do? All right, well, I got three types of substitutions to talk to you about today, so I've taken care of one. We got two more to go. <laughs> The next one is a classic. It's the Bernoulli DE, differential equations that almost look linear. This is almost linear. The only problematic piece is this y to the n. Now, it's worth pointing out, when n is 0, that's 1, and so then you just have a linear DE. When n is 1, then you would just subtract the p of x, y, to the right-hand side, and then, ta-da, it's separable. So, we'll look exclusively at the cases when n is something other than 0 or 1. Okay. Now, if this is your first time encountering the name uh, Bernoulli, uh, get ready, because the, the Bernoullis are everywhere. So uh, the Bernoulli family were a uh, wealthy family in the uh, late 1600s, early 1700s. So they got their... Uh, filthy fingerprints all over, uh, not just mathematics, but, I mean, pick any branch of science, uh, Bernoulli is going to show up, and uh, the best part is it's never the same one. Um, in math, we've got uh, Jacob and uh, John are the two Bernoullis in, in our subject, um, and they uh, famously hated each other. Um, so there's a branch of math called the Calculus of Variations, and the only reason that branch of math exists is because uh, Jacob and John kept trying to outdo each other in terms of uh, who is smarter than the other. So, anyway. Uh, but yeah, if you, if you like type Bernoulli and then math term, you're always going to find something like a Bernoulli number, Bernoulli function, Bernoulli derivative. It's, they, they, they're all over the place. Alright. But anyway, so Bernoulli D's are nice first order DEs that can be always substituted when n is not 0 and n is not 1 to be turned into a linear one. So, like I said, we'll focus on other cases. So let's look at the case when y is uh, being squared over there. Now, the first thing I want to know is this doesn't quite look like the form that I just promised. Note this is like the standard form of a linear DE with this extra y to the n term. So here, let me multiply everything by e to the x, get into the required form, All right, it looks a little bit more uh, exciting. Now, what would I do here? Well, like I just said, it's almost linear. It's so close to being linear. This y squared term is the problem. So divide it out. Okay, make div let's divide out the thing that makes it nonlinear, because now... Now what's going on? Well, now I've got this y to the negative 1 term right here. And you may not notice it, but your brain does. The derivative of this looks exactly like the derivative of this. <gasps> Let's let u equal y to the negative 1. Then its derivative is negative y so negative 2 times dy dx. Chain rule, right? Power rule. Pull the power to the front. Take 1 away from it. There we go. Multiply by the derivative of the inside. Ooh. So that means my DE becomes a linear DE. Because now, negative du dx minus u, that coincides with what my DE needs to equal. 
and getting it into its standard form, we now have a first order linear differential equation. Ah, beautiful. So uh, it turns out that there is a general form for uh, Bernoulli DEs. Um, there's like a general substitution. It's like y is equal to um, uh, one minus uh, n. Uh, don't memorize that. I, I don't think that's useful, right? The Bernoulli, right? It, it's an equation that essentially looks linear. So get rid of the thing that makes it nonlinear. That's the trick. Then you should get something that looks like, hey, I got this function, and then it's being added to its derivative. So obviously we're going to let the u equal that to get it into, hey, this plus its derivative. All right, so let's get the integrating factor. The coefficient on u is 1, so the integrating factor is e to the x. All right, and there we go. This, this went pretty smoothly. So what do we do now? Well, now we solve for u, so multiply both sides by e to the negative x, or divide by 1 over e to the x, however you want to um, think of that. Okay, so multiplying that out gives me this. And now, here, I'm not done yet. I started with y's and x's. I need to end with y's and x's, so replace u with what we substituted it uh, for, which was y to the negative 1. That's 1 over y, so then we can solve for y by doing 1 over the whole thing. Remember, you cannot reciprocate individually. Reciprocation is everything. Okay. And if you want to at this point, this can be cleaned up in a couple of ways. Um, uh, you can multiply top and bottom by e to the x um, and move things around and some other things you could do. Um, so, depending on what math program you would plug this into, you're going to get multiple answers, but there we go. Okay. All right, so, homogeneous first order DEs, Bernoulli DEs, I promised you three types of substitutions. So, let's talk about the last one. So, um... The last one is going to be just a sampling of one general type, because uh, the homogeneous and the Bernoulli are very predictable. The way they're uh, very particular forms that we can kind of manipulate. Other substitutions are very sort of situationally dependent, right? You'll see some examples um, in the homework where it's kind of just like, well, you would obviously do the substitution to make this work. Okay. Here's one that I uh, have a uh, fun little story about. I haven't really been going off the tangents. I've been doing a good job. Uh, so for the last video, I started rambling incoherently, but uh, here we go. So uh, when I was teaching differential equations, this is uh, fall uh, 2019, um, I was getting reviewed for promotion. And uh, the class that uh, one of the professors from the last department was sitting in watching uh, uh, me perform my... Uh, my, uh, my uh, differential equations lecture was substitutions, exactly what we're talking about today. And uh, me being the big dum-dum I am, I went too fast, so I had time to kill. I had a solid 10 minutes I needed to kill, in fact, actually. I, I did not time it very well. Um, and don't tell anybody this, but if nobody was watching me, I just would have ended class and be like, All right, we're done, I don't have anything else to talk about. <laughs> Which, um, when I took differential equations uh, uh, the, um, many, many years ago, I had a class, the professor got through everything he wanted to talk about in 20 minutes, and then he just let us out, and that was the best day ever. Uh, I, I don't think he wanted the lecture that day. I think that was really what happened. He just did, like, one problem. He was like, all right, that's it for today, bye. But anyway, so, I have time to kill. All right, I'm being observed, right, from for promotion, so, you know, I, I, got, I, I can't screw up. So I got time to kill, so I'm like, all right, well, let me, I got the textbook with me. Let me just pick a problem and say, let's do it. And I saw this one. And I was like, oh, this is a good problem. Right? So this is like, oh, there's a clear substitution you need to do. Yeah. So if you're looking at this and you want to solve it, you might go, ooh, what do I do? Well, probably should get rid of that x plus y term, right? If you turn on the cosine of u, that'd be a lot easier to handle. Right, the fact that it's x plus y right now is the difficult part. If it was just one variable, we could handle that. Now, what's the derivative of that? Okay, well, note that we can rearrange it as y is equal to u minus x. And when you take the derivative of that, you'll get du dx minus 1, right? x is the respect to x is 1. And the derivative of y respect to x is dy. And, oh, hey, look at this. You got du dx minus 1 lines up a cosine to u. 
Okay, so that would then give you a nice separable differential equation, right? So you would set that up. Now note here on the right-hand side, I'm not integrating anything, but aren't I? Right? So in fact, reality here, and uh, some magic, ooh, look at that. Right, really there's a 1 there, right, because this is equal to this times 1, so when we do the cross multiplication. Right, that would just integrate the x plus uh, c, so that's not too hard. Right, but the thing you should be shivering about, and the thing that, while I started working this out, and, you know, bullshitting my way for a solution, taking a lot of time, right, because I have 10 minutes to kill, remember, um, I get here, and then I realize, oh, wait, how do you solve this? <laughs> I totally froze, and I just stared at it for a couple of seconds. I was like, oh, wait, how do you do this integral? Um, and my first, my first thought was to multiply top and bottom by cosine, so we can get a cosine squared, and then, you know, you get cosine squared, and you can turn it into 1 minus sine squared, and then I quickly realized that that was a garbage idea, um, and that wouldn't help me out. And so here's what I did. Here's what I did, because uh, I still have, like, you know, I have, like, seven or six minutes to kill. So I hit here. And then I pause, and then I go to the classic, ooh, what do we do? How do you solve this? All right, you guys try it. And, uh, you know, I tried, like, making it seem like I had planned all of this beforehand. <laughs> I clearly hadn't. Um, and so my hope, then, was that I walk around the classroom and find a student that figured it out, and then just, like, go up and do it. Um, while this was going on, I had my phone on me, so I opened up Wolfram Alpha and typed up the integral. And um, when I got back the answer, I'm like, how the hell is this tangent of x over 2? <laughs> Um, <laughs> and so I was like, okay, it's something that I know how to do, and I was like brain farting the whole time with what to do. And we were walking around, and um, I was looping back to the front of the classroom to do the presentation. And I was about to just like, uh, like give up and just say classes over <laughs> and just get fired, you know. Um, but as I was going to the front, a student in the front catches me, and he's like, hey, is this how you do it? And I come over. And he has the answer, right? I, I knew it had to be a uh, tangent of x over 2, but I couldn't quite figure out how that happens. Um, right? Well, uh, at least if Wolfram Alpha is to be believed. Even if Wolfram Alpha gives you an answer, sometimes it's like, I, how the hell does that even happen? Uh, but anyway, so uh, the student shows me what he does, and, you know, I slap my forehead and go, oh, yeah, duh, obviously. And by, oh, yeah, duh, obviously, what I really meant was, oh, yeah, that's right. 1 plus cosine, you should always remember that there is a trig identity for 1 plus cosine of whatever. So recall uh, this formula, which is sometimes called the half-angle formula, or the double-angle formula. Right, if I replace theta with, oh, I don't know, u over 2, oh, look, 1 plus cosine u. So, oh, look at that, and now you've got a cosine squared, and note that it's going to be 1 over it, so when we try to do the integral, oh, you pick up a secant squared. The integral of secant squared is tangent. Oh, that's why tan of x over 2 shows up. So, I got saved that day by a student in my front row, um, who is now a math minor, by the way. Because after he pulled that off, I was like, I talked to him, like, dude, you're, you're great at math. Do you want me to math for it? <laughs> I'm the guy to talk to if you want to fill out that form. But anyway, so uh, I got saved. Saved by the trig identity. Right, and so now when you do this integral, it comes out. Very nicely. And remember, we started with u, so we should end with... Uh, we started with x's and y, so we should end with x's and y. And there we go. Okay. Now, um, like I said earlier on, the point of this course is to not kill you with integrals, right? This would be an integral I'd consider for this course to be above our pay grade. Right? On, like, uh, a problem list, um, I'm not going to do this to you. There might be a couple of web assignment problems where it goes a little bit above and beyond, but this this is a this is um this is one of those integrals that like you know you, you see them in calc two you learn how to do them in calc two and then you forget about them and then you run afoul of them later on and you're like oh this is like I I you, like even I even me I, you know I'm like I, I at one point in my life I knew how to do this but anyway so. There's my uh, my fun story on that uh, type of uh, substitution. I'll, I will never forget this now, because I got very sweaty in class that day. <laughs> but anyway, so there you go. And with that, we'll leave the exciting world of solving 
first order differential equations, and now we're going to start moving into, well, how do we use first order differential equations? Why do we even care about all this stuff? Well, let's find out.